A little bit of music there, brought to you by Strange Music, of course. Welcome, welcome. Thursday Szechuan with Jack Dub. We're right here on GHRO. That's Greenhouse Radio Online on the Canon Curate Discord. Yeah, today we'll be bringing uh, uh, the legalization news reports uh, around the world. And I got a guest later on tonight. And we'll be talking, to, he's from Nigeria, and we'll be talking with him a little bit about. Uh, Basically, how the legalization is, uh, they're wanting it to happen in Nigeria because, uh, you know, they see, for one thing, they see they can make uh, some money for the country because they can, you know, grow and export, uh, you know, hemp and then also uh, cannabis as well. And also, of course, you know, uh, no one should be going to jail for uh, cannabis usage, usage or possession or any of that, really. Yeah, a lot of, uh, always lots of new legal, legalization reports. We got, uh, out of uh, New York, there, uh, both the state and the mayor of New York City. You got the state Cuomo. He's talking about, uh, you know, basically trying to right the wrongs of uh, the cannabis criminalization over the past years, and you know, people that got locked up from it. And they saw that probably targeted uh, a certain group as well. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and play this news report real quick. This one's uh, got a uh, Cuomo here talking about. Uh, Basically, how you'd like to see recreational uh, legalization take place. In today's political news is the signing of the $867 billion farm bill. The bipartisan legislation provides subsidies to farmers and its support. Oh, got the wrong one there. <laughs> okay, actually, before Como, we'll, we'll put um, him on in just a minute here. We'll go ahead and talk about this one. Uh, this is the Farm Bill, federal uh, U.S. Farm Bill of 2018. It was uh, recently passed, signed by Trump. And uh, it has to do, you know, subsidies to the farm industry, uh, among other things. But it also has to do with uh, legalizing the uh, hemp uh, industrial farming. So basically they can... What's that, Grim? Yeah, Grim has something to say about a, a room lower... Ow. Oh, oh, no doubt. Sorry, folks. I'm over in general chat. I bet the uh, Candy Crate folks are wondering what the heck's going on down there. But uh, yeah, I'll continue to post in the proper place now. Yeah, thanks, Grim. Yeah, Grim, uh, kind enough to do the recording tonight. Going to start uh, recording these podcasts and get them out to the people. Especially, uh, you know, we got interviews and, uh, you know, legalization news. People might want to listen to at a at a different time. Yeah, so with the uh, farm bill, basically, uh, you know, the federal, they're making it so you can do, uh, you know, industrial hemp farming. You know, there's multiple things to do that. You know, you got textiles, you got, uh, they can actually make plastics with uh, hemp and, uh, you know, papers, paper and uh, CBD, of course. That's, uh, that's actually been already, it's allowed for medicinal use, CBD. And there's, you know, a lot of uh, uses for that. And it's very, there's a high potency of it in uh, hemp, especially. And there's not a lot of THC in hemp. So with the Farm Bill, basically also the, uh, you know, reclassified it. Because hemp was classified right along with marijuana as being a, you know, class one drug, narcotic or whatever. But, uh, you know, now it's just brought more down to the farm level, more where it should be, you know, the hemp. So I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, continue this little report. Actually, they have here, uh, they're talking a little bit about this uh, this farm bill that they just passed. I'll go ahead and uh, play some of this report. First, the food stamp program. It also legalized the growing of hemp, which is our tenant reporter Matt Boone explains could mean big business here in San Diego. The company Medical Marijuana Inc. has been around since 2009. We had a lot of uh, Venice Beach uh, doctors, uh, so to speak. That CEO, Stuart Titus, who's overseen a lot of changes since then. The San Diego company now specializes in CBD products. It's an extract found in hemp plants, and it's different from the psychoactive THC compound in marijuana. Hemp can be grown for a high concentration of CBD, which is the non-psychoactive cannabinoid. Currently, they have to import their raw hemp products from farms in Europe. While CBD products have been legal to sell in some states, growing hemp in the U.S. has largely been outlawed since the 1930s. This bill, though, changes that. We really think that this is going to be... 
Yeah, it's a really good thing. They have to. Uh, yeah, you heard about that. Yeah, the San Diego company basically, uh, you know, they make a product that uh, helps people with, uh, you know, a variety of ailments. And, uh, you know, they have to import their CBD oil from Europe because it's illegal. You know, it has been illegal in the States to grow hemp at all. And uh, so, yeah, it's definitely uh, great for industry and, uh, you know, for the medicinal industry as well. A tremendous uh, growth market over the next three to five years. They're already projecting to nearly double their revenue next year. But while CBD products have been championed for their health benefits, they've yet to be accepted by the mainstream medical industry. It's interesting to note that people found out about CBD through their friends, their relatives, their neighbors, or on the internet, rather than from their doctors. One reason has been a lack of research, but Titus thinks that will change too now that the Farm Bill has also taken hemp off the federal list of Schedule One drugs. We look very much forward to the resurgence of the hemp industry in America now that we're fully back on the legal playing field. Matt Boone, 10 News. Game changer there. Yeah, he said it, game changer, you know. It's a, uh, it should never been illegal in the first place, you know. There's been multiple, you know, reasons I've heard in history, you know, why it's been uh, criminalized. You know, even down to hemp, I guess, back, uh, you know, you're, the lumber industry might have something to do with it, you know, as far as they didn't want to get cut in on the paper industry. And, uh, and you know, marijuana itself has been, you know, used to criminalize different groups. You know, I think one of the earliest was, uh, you know, the Mexican group. They, you know, criminalized. They wanted to, you know, basically they want to keep under their thumb. I think quite possibly, you know, hippies too, of course, when that was happening. You know, it's like kind of another way to control the people. But, uh, yeah, as, uh, you know, as most of us know, it's... Uh, not something that needs to be criminalized in such a way. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, play some of that uh, Cuomo, you know, the uh, governor in New York, and he's got a uh, you know, some information about uh, basically how he wants to change, you know, the wrongs that the uh, you know, state has done over the years as far as, uh, you know, the criminalization of cannabis. We will advance our justice agenda and particularly address the forms of injustice that for too long have unfairly targeted the African-American and minority communities. And the fact is, we have had two criminal justice systems, one for the wealthy and the well-off, and one for everyone else. And that's going to end. We must also end the needless and unjust criminal conv convictions and the debilitating criminal stigma, and let's legalize the adult use of recreational marijuana once and for all. Yeah, for sure. Legalize it, no doubt. I gotta give a shout out to the audience here. We got uh, Blunt Smash, Breeze, Grim, In the Now, John U. Dyer, KOH. And of course, the Rhythm Bot all join us here, here on the Can Curate Discord, and it's uh, G R H O. And as you listen to Thursday Szechuan, got some news, and uh, in a little bit we got a guest coming up as well. Hopefully, he's got his he's on a different time zone, so hopefully, uh, you know, his guy's alarm set right, and he's gonna pop in. But he knows uh, about thirty minutes into the end of the hour, we'll be bringing him on. Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, put on another uh, news report, and this one is the Mayor De Blasio. He's uh, of New York City, and basically he's doing an, uh, an about face from uh, you know his previous stance on uh, you know legalization. They all seem to used to tout the line of it being a gateway, but uh, I think we know the better than that. And actually, good news uh, with that too is uh, ex there he's talking about expunging uh, previous uh, ca cannabis criminal records, you know, which. Uh, I think it kind of goes hand in hand, I'd say, with Cuomo as far as, uh, you know, getting rid of, his, rid of some of the stigma. And, uh, you know, should never have been legal in the first, illegal in the first place. You thought, you know, I think they would have learned from uh, prohibition in the past. But uh, the only thing about New York City, though, uh, or in New York in general, they're talking about making it 21 years of age for the uh, legal age. Can I go ahead and... Uh, Put on de Blasio and see what he's got to say about this. After long opposing the prospect of New Yorkers smoking pot legally, Mayor Bill de Blasio announced he's had a change of heart. Today I announced my support 
for the legalization of marijuana. His honors about face comes just days after Governor Cuomo announced his agenda to legalize cannabis. But de Blasio's support comes with caveats, all listed in the 77-page report prepared by a mayoral task force. And the more research my team did, the more I came to believe there really was a way to set ground rules that could work that could focus on safety and health and fairness. The panel of representatives from several city agencies, including health, police and fire departments, and business services, researched the effects of legalizing pot and came up with several recommendations for the city. Users must be 21 years old to consume marijuana. There's no public consumption unless at locally regulated consumption sites. Marijuana law violations should be civil, not criminal, and criminal records for marijuana-related offenses should be expunged for drug crimes that would no longer be illegal. Treating marijuana. Yeah, so that's kind of a little bit of a bummer as far as, uh, you know, they can only smoke in, you know, certain designated areas. Because, uh, yeah, that can be kind of tough, you know, especially, uh, you know, there's some prov provinces in Canada where you can't, you know, smoke on the sidewalk at all. And, uh, and you know, if you're in an apartment where you can't smoke at all either, then you're kind of get, you know a bit of a tough spot. So uh, yeah, that's definitely something to consider as the uh, you know different places start to roll out legalization. You know, is a uh, you know ease of access. It'd be uh, yeah, because I was just recently uh, in the past five days down in uh, Toronto and uh, visited one of my favorite spots, uh, Kensington Market down there, and they're pretty. Uh, Pretty free and easy going there. A lot of, uh, you know, hippie and punk influence and Rasta. And it's right next to Chinatown. So it's got some Asian influence as well. But uh, yeah, Ontario, yeah, you can, you can basically, Ontario, the, the way the laws are is uh, for smoking in public. It's basically anywhere you can legally smoke cigarettes, you're able, you're allowed to smoke uh, cannabis as well. So, you know, that, that works out. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that turned out that way. So yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, some of these other, uh, you know, places, uh, you know, take a lot easier stance on that. I mean, as far as uh, opening the market up as well, you know, I, I don't think they should clamp down quite so much. I kind of more believe it should be, uh, if they have to regulate, you know, then uh, it should be more like cigarettes, in my opinion. You know, so basically, uh, you know, any place I can sell cigarettes, they can sell uh, cannabis as well. And uh, I think that make it... Uh, you know, very accessible, and uh, tax man be happy with that too. Cause I think they get a, a lot better uh, sales with it that way. But actually, yeah, speaking of uh, Canada, there's over in Vancouver they had a uh, kind of like a I guess demonstration of uh, freedom. I guess you could say. I mean, because uh, they're not too happy exactly with how the uh, rollout's been going. You know, because the way the feds are going, they you don't want to try to collect as much tax money as they can, of course. So, you know, they, uh, they're pretty well shutting down, you know, the, uh, you know, the original uh, growers, you know, that have been providing for so long. And uh, having to go, if they're able to, you know, go through, uh, you know, fees to get regulate, you know, to uh, get licensed, you know, so they can grow and then sell and as well. So basically in Vancouver, they went ahead and uh, opened up a little farmer's market in this uh, one area where, uh, you know, just basically they're putting out their... Uh, what they've grown and uh you know for people to sample and purchase so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, play a little bit of this report it's out of vancouver Yeah, I guess that video report might be better to watch. <laughs> yeah, it's basically, uh, it's it's a, you know, on-scene uh, independent reporter, and they're uh, kind of documenting this. Basically, you know, they just got a table set up, you know, in the park, and uh, got the wares set out, and people for can uh, come to purchase. And so they'll, you know, obviously, eventually, they'll, uh, the government's going to protest, and they'll go to court and, you know, see if uh, something more can come of that as far as... Uh, you know, loosening up a bit, so uh, it's not quite as regulated. 
Yeah, I, I can see. Uh, I mean, that's kind of basically how they're doing hemp. But uh, yeah, I can, I can see they're uh, them being a little worried about it. Because I know, in, actually, in some place in uh, actually in Canada, they're they're looking at legalizing edibles. You know, because they're trying to figure out a way that uh, you know it's, they deem it less of a danger to the public, sort of thing. Because I guess in some states where they've had uh, or legalization already, they've had a lot of hospital kind of troubles where uh, you know edible takes a little longer to hit. You. So they've had trouble with people, I guess, eating farts. So, uh, yeah, so, so that's kind of what they've been talking about. But there's actually what they're talking about is there's, I think it's 10 milligram uh, per edible has to be in a pack. You know, so basically if you had a cookie with 10, 10 milligrams in it, it has to be, you know, its own in its own little package kind of thing. And, of course, keeping it so it's uh, not appealing to kids, you know, so instead of gummy bit. No, we'll have me square. Yeah, down in Texas now they're talking about uh, legalization. The medicinal for now. So I'm just going to play a little bit of the and uh, they're looking at 2019. Well, next month, the 86th Texas legislature will go into session and hundreds of bills have already been filed. One of the hot topics may be legalizing medical marijuana. Erica Hernandez has more on these proposed bills and the chances that Texas turns green. Currently in the United States, 33 states plus the District of Columbia have legalized the use of medical marijuana. Right now, Texas has the Texas Compassionate Use Program, or TICA, that only allows patients with intractable epilepsy to have a low dosage of medical marijuana. While that was a start, many believe that medical marijuana should be accessible to all patients who may need it. What I'm sad and concerned and upset about is why do we only pick that medical problem. What about uh, the grandparents with cancer or cataracts? What about the veteran with PTSD? What about the mother, the father, the brother, the sister with Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis or ALS? District 26 State Senator Jose Menendez has been fighting hard to expand current laws and came close back in 2017 when a bill he authored had bipartisan support but didn't make it in time for a vote. So I'm hoping that the legislature can forget uh, work of, uh, distractions like a bathroom bill and work on the things that really make a difference in people's lives. The current bill filed by Senator Menendez, SB 90, would not only expand the use of medical marijuana to more people. Yeah, so it's kind of like he was talking about, you know, there's, uh, I mean, there's just so many, uh, you know, things that medicinally cannabis can be useful for. I mean, he named off a few, you know, he said, uh, he mentioned cataracts, you know, and uh, cancer, you know, both, you know, in older patients quite often. And even, uh, you know, of course, PTSD. And uh, Parkinson's disease, uh, multiple sclerosis, ALS. I mean, there's, uh, yeah, there, there's many more. It's a uh, by far understudied uh, medicine. And uh, yeah, the prescription drugs, uh, their side effects are uh, just out of control with a lot of them. Yeah, especially, uh, you know, a lot of them have... Uh, you know what they'll do is a lot of times is when you get a symptom the reaction basically when you get a reaction from a prescription drug often they'll just kind of prescribe another prescription to cover up that symptom and uh it's really easy for a lot of times people to get a pile of pills they're taking and you know it's just way too much you know for their system to handle I'm gonna put up a, another news report here you know this one uh this one's actually talking about ohio and uh their medical marijuana rollout they uh it's, it's already been uh, legalized for medicinal use, but uh, they're just kind of, they're trying to get basically all the licensing in place and open up uh, some dispensaries because, uh, you know, as of yet, they uh, have not dispensed anything, you know, to the, you know, the people that uh, can benefit from the medicinal uses. So I'll play a little bit of this report. This is out of uh, Ohio. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to play here. Let's see, is it play? It's searching. Ah, I might have it paused. All right, let me go ahead and skip this one. Just one second.
From suds to buds, Anheuser-Busch, the world's biggest brewer, is teaming up with a Canadian cannabis partner to research cannabis-infused drinks. For now, they're only looking at cannabis ingredients in Canada, where they legalize recreational marijuana nationally this year. And here in Ohio, we are still trying to get our medical marijuana program off the ground, and now it needs more money. All this after it's already gotten millions in application and licensing fees, and before Ohio patients have even been able to buy any medical marijuana. News 5's Kevin Barry explains why the state is forking over millions more while still approving licenses that should have happened months ago. This week, the board that controls Ohio's state budget approved a more than $4 million loan for Ohio's medical marijuana control program. And more than half of that money is just for legal fees. The state has taken roughly $5 million in application and licensing fees from businesses getting into the industry so far. We reached out to the Department of Commerce, which oversees much of the state's medical marijuana program, to find out why it needs more money. A spokesperson blamed several lawsuits against the program. She told me legal expenses have exceeded anything we could have planned for. She says since businesses don't pay license fees until they're operational, delays getting the program off the ground have kept the Department of Commerce from getting the revenue it needs to oversee it. Those same delays have been frustrating for patients like Amanda for months. And you right away, uh, as Yeah, it's real tough when it's, you know, it's already been uh, legalized medicinally there in Ohio, but it's just, uh, yeah, they're just, the way they're rolling it out, they're just, you know, not able to, uh, they're not getting funded properly or whatever it is, but, uh, you know, as soon as they get funded, uh, you know, they'll pretty well pay for itself. Yeah, it kind of reminds me that one of those old, other old reports where uh, one of the regulators for, uh, I think he's, I don't know, maybe New Jersey or someone they were talking to, and he was uh, saying, like, oh, this is going to cost, you know, extra money to, you know, hold all this weed for for distribution. And I'm thinking, well, like, yeah, you guys will be getting plenty of tax money. Actually, a lot of, uh, actually, in yeah, New York, I know uh, from, I thought I heard from another report, too, where Cuomo, uh, basically for his budget, you know, for 2019 or whatever, it's already included, you know, revenue from uh, cannabis sales, you know, tax revenue. So uh, it sounds like they're already uh, kind of planning on it and they're, uh, they're, they're in need of the tax revenue. It seems like to be a very a common uh, thing they're going on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue a little more of this report here. As soon as I smoked it, that it was helping me. Amanda says there's no doubt in her mind medical marijuana helps her walk with less pain. The chance that she'll be able to buy the medicine legally soon in Ohio has been a bright spot in what's been a painful seven years since she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. There's definitely a lot of hope that things are going to be better, that you can actually get the medicine that you specifically want. But Ohio's medical marijuana program was slated to be up and running on September 8th. With 2018 nearly gone, there still isn't any medical marijuana available, even after the state has taken in roughly $5 million in application and licensing fees from businesses getting into the industry. Amanda says she's frustrated. It feels like there isn't a genuine effort to help the people that we know this medicine can help. Just this afternoon, the state of Ohio approved its first lab that will start testing marijuana before it's sold to patients. But so far, only one dispensary in the state is allowed to sell that marijuana once it gets through the lab. In Cleveland, I'm Kevin Barry. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. I need to hurry up with that rollout. Yeah, legalization news, legalization news. We got, uh, as of now, there's 10 states legalized recreational and uh, plus Washington, D.C., and there's 33 states for medicinal. They're already legalized for medicinal. And then, uh, yeah, now we got Pennsylvania. And they're, uh, actually, I actually heard Connecticut too. But yeah, Pennsylvania, they're talking about it as well. You know, they're looking at the states around them and the uh, tax revenue they're going to be collecting. And they don't want to get behind the curve and miss because it, uh, that seems to be the general uh, direction. Everything's quickly flowing. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You get enough states behind it. And, uh, the feds are going to have to uh, take a serious look about uh, legalizing it. Yeah, so this report here is out of, uh, yeah, they're going to talk about Pennsylvania, the PA state. Recreational marijuana soon be legal in Pennsylvania. Well, 10 states and the District of Columbia have already done so. And now Governor Wolf is saying it is time for Pennsylvania to take a serious look at it. 
Eyewitness News reporter Matt Heckel is live for us at the state capitol in Harrisburg with more. Matt? Hey, yeah, so Governor Wolf indicated both on Twitter as well as again today that he's looking at what other states are doing in terms of recreational marijuana to decide if Pennsylvania should follow suit. Meanwhile, one Republican leader was quick to come out against it. On Twitter Wednesday, the governor taking a different position on legalizing recreational marijuana. It is slightly different. When asked when will PA catch up and make recreational marijuana legal, the governor responding in part, I think it's time for Pennsylvania to take a serious and honest look at recreational marijuana. What I said yesterday was basically a result of the change in the environment. Can't, we just can't duck our heads into the sand and say things aren't, aren't happening. Wolf's new lieutenant governor, John. Yeah, like I was saying, you know, they see, uh, see, they see the writing on the wall and they see what's happening around them, a lot of those states. And, uh, you know, I guess they see it's okay politically to, you know, go with it now. So, you know, as long as it, it's people, uh, you know, the medicine they need and uh, not going to jail for recreational, then bring it on. Fetterman has spoken out in support of legalization, as has the Auditor General Eugene De Pasquale. The idea that we are still throwing people in prison for this is insane. But a change would have to be approved by the Republican-controlled state legislature. The Republican leader in the Senate, Jake Corman, saying in a statement, quote, the governor's new position on the issue of legalizing the drug for recreational use is reckless and irresponsible, and this sends the wrong message to our youth. But I think what he was talking about, his concerns about marijuana, and I think there are people who have that. I'm trying just to recognize that the state of New York, the state of New Jersey have made some decisions, uh, and that, that we just can't ignore that. And Senator Corman went on to say that he would do everything in his power to prevent legalization. Meanwhile, State Senator Dalen Leach went on Twitter and said, "Yeah, hoping they can stand the way too long. Yeah, they can't. They can't stop it. Yeah, actually, out of uh, worldwide, on the worldwide scene, we got uh, Thailand recently legalized medicinal use, and uh, they actually have one other native plant there too that they uh, legalized for medicinal as well." Um, but they're the first, uh, you know, Southeast Asian uh, country to, uh, you know, start with uh, cannabis legalization, at least on the medicinal level. And so that should uh, help break down a lot of the stigmas, no doubt. And go ahead and uh, play a little bit of this uh, Thailand medicinal legalization report. Wow, it's quite the intro they got there. I'm going to uh, play a little more of this and see if uh, we can get through that. Yeah, not some, uh, not much to talk about on that news report. Actually, that now that I remember that video is a lot of uh, text rolling by. Those are obnoxious videos you have to read. I want a video. I want to sit back and listen to it. That's all right. At any rate, in uh, Thailand, they have a legalized legalized medicinal use of cannabis. So that's a uh, good news on the worldwide stage. Yeah, looking for uh, see if Buddy shows up. We got uh, seven thirty one now. Just about uh, interview time. So hopefully uh, it's got his alarm set. It's going to pop on soon. I'll put on a couple more uh, news reports here. If anyone feels like jumping on for a chat, go ahead and uh, say something in the chat room. We'll bring you on and talk a little bit about a little bit about cannabis legalization or whatever else we might want to talk about. Yeah, hey, up next, uh, let me take a quick look here and see what other uh, reports of the week we have going on here yeah this one report uh you know kind of covered uh basically what a state goes through when it, it legalizes you know kind of as far as what to expect you know the the different trends um yeah kind of we had mentioned already you know the different places it's already legalized and they say with, one thing with legalization it's good obviously because you know less chance of product being tampered with but, you know, I always say, uh, you know, you want to trust your source anyways. Um, 
And then also, interestingly enough, where they legalized it, uh, teen marijuana use actually decreased. I mean, that could just be a, you know, a sign of the times. Who really knows? But of course, tourism increased to the areas where you know where it has been legalized. For uh, actually, it kind of felt like I was a bit of tourist down in Toronto. Although really, I can smoke anywhere. But went to a few of my head shops when I was down there, and geez, I got like uh, eleven packs of rolling papers, big wide variety, just to. Uh, and I unfortunately I can't smoke blunts all the time, so got some rolling papers to start rolling up some in between. And I got a uh, nice little water bong. Not a big glass one, but uh, just a little bit smaller than that. It's a plastic one. But it's a nice little buzz you can get from doing bong rips. So <laughs> it's a step up from, uh, you know, those uh, water pipes with the little hose, you know. Those uh, clog up a bit too easy. You know, they're a little, uh, little too restrictive. But uh, now it's got a new pipe, too. It's got a little... Uh, cap that you know it's a regular metal pipe and it's got one of those caps you kind of screw on and it's got the little hole in the top so basically you can light it but then when you're done hitting it, it just kind of like puts itself out you know because it's only uh it doesn't get enough oxygen going in there to keep it going but yeah, so this is uh yeah this report it's basically what to expect when a uh state you know legalizes the use of marijuana and you know, what to get before you know besides a bunch of happy uh citizens of course Let's see. I might have to skip this. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, no. G-H-R-O. That's right. I might have to skip this one here. Issues. I'm having issues with this bot. I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to start this one uh, playing again here. There you go. Right now, legalizing marijuana is a state by state decision. It's currently legal recreationally in 10 states and legal medically in 33 states. When marijuana is more regulated, it becomes safer to consume because there's less risk that it's mixed with other substances. A new study from the National Survey on Drug Use and Health also found that teen marijuana use declined in four of the five states that had legalized weed from 2014 to 2016. Tourism is also on the rise in states that have legalized recreational marijuana use. Colorado said it attracted about 6.5 million cannabis tourists in 2016. Yeah, no doubt you can expect tourism. Yeah, for sure. People are uh, doing like to feel like they're under the thumb of the government all the time. So it's nice to uh, get out and, you know, be able to do what you enjoy without a, uh, you know, threat of uh, being arrested or fined or stigmatized or you know whatever else no doubt but i'm just gonna go ahead and uh put on uh start putting on a couple tunes here no doubt oh yeah no doubt i got a uh, koh here help me out in the chat and he's uh suggesting i use the semicolon semicolon call up a song and yeah that's good old fred boat nah actually fred boat uh got a little bit of history me and him he's a <laughs> Faithful little player, but I do like the uh, this other rhythm. Yeah, the rhythm I like a little more just because it uh, automatically plays it up. You know, you don't have to uh, you know pick anything. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some Red Man music here. Go ahead and uh, message uh, Buddy, see if uh, he can be up for an interview or not. Ah, uh, no doubt. Okay, yeah, we got Breeze here in chat. Yeah, come on, Breeze. Go ahead and. Uh, Unmute yourself. Bree's interested in coming on and having a chat about uh, CBD oil. There she is. I'm not sure if uh, John, do we need to give her uh, credentials to be able to chat on here? Oh, no, I just unmuted her. Ah, cool, yes. cool. Do I need credentials? <laughs> <laughs> just give me one second to get ready. Let me get the other mic in quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got the hookup. No doubt. Well, this, uh, everyone's talking here to Breeze. It's uh, at Breezen, and she's uh, down in South Africa. Things are a bit different there, no doubt. But uh, yeah, she has uh, some knowledge about CBD oil. Sounds like she might uh, spread with this. She's getting her uh, mic set up here. 
I know I've known Breeze on Steam it for quite a while. No doubt. We've uh She's all she's all started back on uh Grimm's uh Grimm server. The uh respect the people server. Really? <laughs> yeah <Hi guys>. yeah. <laughs> Just had a comment real quick. I love Breeze too. Hi Breeze. Hola Senor, me no Pablo Inglés. So glad you could come on. Notice. <laughs> yes, no doubt. Um, so what do you what do you know about uh so how's it going breeze i i just got invited to the server and i'm like oh it's all about weed what do you, what does breeze know about weed well <laughs> just a little oh yeah you're at the right place no doubt um no i have in all honesty jack i mean you know me i've never been a stoner my interest in in weed stemmed well, I've I've always had friends that was like up for smoking and stuff like that, and I've always respected that. I mean, I love the smell. I just can't smoke it myself. Yep. However, my interest in weed actually stemmed from um, being notified that I had the big C. So you oh. kind of look for yeah, yeah, yeah. So I started looking for alternative measures, and of course. Um, CBD oil was high up on that list. And this was just over a year ago. I think, in fact, literally just over a year, one week and one day ago, given the date today, um, that I found out about the cancer. And it is my third bout with it. So oh. this time around, I started off with all naturals. I started growing, um, there's a wonderful plant called Espatbuum and Moringa trees, which is all indigenous um, African plants, um, as well as Sutherlandia. And um, then of course, started my, my weed garden. And the wonderful thing that I noticed when I started growing my weed is that, because I just planted it in my vegetable beds, because fuck, what do I know, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the wonderful thing that I noticed about this is that wherever the beds that the weeds were in, because I would plant like, for example, two spinach, two beans per bed, or two two beds of beans, two beds of spinach, etc. Yeah. But the beds that the weeds was growing in, my vegetables were growing like at two thirds of the rates at the beds without the weed, which was miraculous oh, wow. for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. Fucking fucking shit man um but the reason i started growing was we've got an old uncle yeah up the road and he used to make the oil for his wife who had cancer yeah. um sadly they got divorced and she refused his treatments and ended up going to doctors and she died okay but nonetheless um so i said well i i can't afford the oil that he's making but what i can do is i've got space to grow so I'll grow and then I would take him like um, three times more than what he would need to make me one batch of oil. And that would be my supply of, of medication for the month. And that's the agreement okay. that we have. So that's that. But the, the thing that, that just blew my mind was the fact that whatever vegetable gardens I put the weed in, that vegetables would just be, I promise you, carrots would be <laughs> two thirds larger. The spinach would be fucking two thirds greener. It would just, it's, oh, no. it's an absolutely miraculous, um, what do you call it? A uh, um, beneficial uh, yeah. plant thing. Yeah. Well, so I know with uh, a lot of companion planting, you know, the uh, kind of the roots kind of intermix under the ground, you know, they kind of, I've heard, you know, they share, you know, they share a lot of, uh, you know, the things they need and, you know, could probably exchange, you know, some of the different oils they have to help, you know, protect from things and stuff. So, uh, even, Absolutely. yeah, there's some, yeah, there's some forests like that and, and they've, they've actually proven like all the roots underground of this one huge forest, they consider one large organism, actually, it's like the largest organism in the world or something. And they, and they will actually kind of like send, you know, almost like text messages saying, Hey, I need some of this. Well, I'll give you some of this was, or some of this, you know, exchange. That was Cyber network. Was oh, it that's not? what it is. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, it's a mushroom. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which but is, in a forest which though. Is mushrooms, which is uh, a lot more protein based. However, there's been interesting tests done on plants itself. Um, 
First of all, as far as companion growing goes, like I'm a big fundy of that, being a farmer and all. For mm. example, certain plants you plant, like my tomatoes would be planted with brinjals or eggplants, whatever you want to call it, at the end, um, because they attract similar, the, the same pest that gets attracted to tomatoes would first attack the brinjals. Uh, so okay. it would give you kind of a warning before that as well as like alternating tomato and potatoes for for the potassium acidity uh, balance in in your soil so there's a lot of companion planting and i've been a great um ambassador of that i think when it comes to planting vegetables and plants in general and i in do do ethnobotanical plants um but as far yeah. as weed goes, I was fucking blown away. There's no other word for it, man. Yeah. Actually, I have to... Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, definitely the summer coming up because, uh, yeah, we're really able to grow it now where I'm at. And, uh, yeah, I'll be definitely putting some vegetables around for them. Just, uh, I got to check that out for sure. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I know another good companion is, uh, you know, like if you have, like, uh, sulfur and, like, cabbage. Like, you know, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli. Them. And so if you plant like mint kind of around them, or even if you just mulch mint, the vapors from the mint kind of drives off the uh, cabbage moths. But uh, yeah, there's a, really a, lot of neat, a lot of neat and companions. Absolutely. And the combinations are endless. And uh, throughout the years, I have experimented with all of that, but not being into weed as such. Yep. Uh, that wasn't really something that I considered growing in my vegetable garden. If yeah. I that way. Yeah, you know? no doubt. But now that I have, it surpasses any other companion plant to any other plant that I can ever, that I have planted this year so far. I can tell you now, I have planted kale, cabbage, pumpkin, um, butternut, um, I don't know what the other fucking things are called in English. <laughs> I have planted <laughs> um, beans, I've just planted onions, um, peas. And with all of them, the same result. I get a much better yield. I get at least 20% more yield, at least. Um, and that's not even on on the, the fruit quality and, and final product as such. That even being taken out of equation, I still get a 20% better yield um, per whatever I'm planting, which is fucking brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put this next to my mango trees. Like, put put a put a fucking weed plant next to every mango tree I ever. No planted. doubt. Yeah, someone someone pointed out that they uh, actually, yeah, Grammy pointed out that the roots help aerate quite possibly. I, I can see that too because maybe if it has uh, you know really strong roots, I could see it kind of breaking up some of the soil. Maybe for other things that might help a little bit as well. You know, along with the you know the sharing of their uh, different chemicals and stuff. But so the CBD oil. Now, did you uh, did you take that like in, instead of uh, like radiation treatments or like or did you do you take it to help yes. ease the pain of that um no 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 it wasn't taken it was taken instead of treatment not to ease okay. the pain um yeah. via treatments what i did was i started off with um because like i said uh, one of my hobby fields is ethnobotanical plants and i started taking numerous natural um additives to my diet like the moringa for example it's brilliant plant and the spackworm is a brilliant plant and then i added to that the cbd oil as as a as a thumbnail of the treatment right okay. afterwards i got a um one of my friends from panama sent me a rife machine which works on the body's natural frequencies and um, although I have had brilliant results so far with the with the CBD oil, um, I used the the Rife machine as well. And yep. um, altogether, the combination of things that I used, um, I have had a miraculously a miraculous turnabout on on my on my medical results as such i'm going back yeah it's amazing about a month's time and i am honestly in my mind in my heart mentally physically spiritually i believe that i am going to come out um 
a healed person. So I can hardly feel the lump anymore. Um, yeah, it's all good, man. Fucking good. And, that's and what, this, that's and about this, what I know about weed. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, well, CBD. Yeah, that's, that's a huge part of it. So now, were you growing? Were you growing like cannabis, or were you growing uh, hemp? It was like hemp. Uh, from right here, it's a little more concentrated with the CBDs. Oh no, I'm growing um, like random sativa seeds. And okay, that I yeah. got from friends that came here having a smoke, having a joints and stuff like that. And I'm like, hey, give me those fucking seeds. And I planted that in the vegetable garden. Um, as for specific types of strands, um, I just got told it's sativa by the shape of the leaves. But more than that, yeah. I don't know if it's a specific strand or whatever, but it's it's oh, not yeah. hemp hemp. It's definitely yeah, it's actual friend smoke to, to get high. So I suppose it's not. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, my, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, I've heard a bit about the, uh, the frequency treatment before, where it's basically, uh, you know, there's certain, uh, you know, I've heard, I guess, certain, you know, viruses or bugs or, you know, even, you know, cancers kind of, uh, can't live at certain frequencies. So I have, I have heard that, uh, that helps a little bit with, uh, certain things. So, yeah, but you... even with that, I've already had positive results with the CBD, yeah. CBD oil alone. And um, yeah. not only on the cancer, on my levels of energy, on various other aspects, mental aspects of my life, because um, I tell you something, you get told mm. you, you get told by a doctor, you are fucking gonna die. You better count yeah. your days. You know, you kind of do, whether you want to or not, and however you rebel it, you do go into a state of depression to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, mine was quite drastic. And, you know, it was like, if the cancer doesn't kill me, I'm going to kind of feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah. Um, there's no better way to put it, but that's that's the long and the short of the story. And even, know, with that, even with that mental it helped with the mental, physical, emotional, every aspect of my life, there was an improvement. Um, the rise... Yeah, the out outlook's a huge thing, for sure. If you have a, you know, more up, more positive attitude than that, you know, that can always help with, uh, you know, healing quicker as well. So, yeah, it's good to have that. Hello? Yeah, yeah, I'm oh, here. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Sorry, please. I tagged you in the that. other room. <laughs> oh no doubt. Yeah, and the uh, yeah. So the um, yeah, because they're, they're yeah, they're like we're saying, yeah, they're two different kinds. So the uh, yeah, it's the kind that they smoke. You yeah, know, my aunt. Uh, she uh, some people are allergic to the smoke marijuana smoke for whatever reason, you know. But it uh, you know, the CBD oil and other things, uh, you know, it doesn't bother them. Yeah, that's interesting with energy levels too. I've never, uh, you know, personally tried CBD oil that I know of, but uh, I've heard of, uh, you know, some drinks kind of getting infused with it now, and uh, probably be a little more available. I have to, you know, check that out sometime. Yeah, I just put up a picture in the chat of that was from my previous harvest, and the next oh, one nice. should be ready in about a month. Um, so as you can see, it's it's. It's yeah, outdoors. I'd... It's it's a happy plant, man. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, yeah, it grows like a weed. That thing. Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful plant. That thing is. Uh, yeah, been around for a long time. I'd say, you know, uh, it's just so amazing. You know, they, they have. Uh, there's some some kind of older reports where. Uh, it just it's, it's they've they've found that it's basically marijuana has been around humans for you know way longer than uh, you know than we even think, and it's just kind of a. Seems like such a perfect match as far as, um, you know, being so good for the body and everything. Absolutely. And I think the place that me and you met first was when I was talking about um, making a, sorry, give me a second, making a hash liqueur, which is one of my favorites to make. It's like a little party trick that I do. Um, yeah. Where I take hash and I infuse it into, into vodka or a spirit. And then I make a cream liqueur from that and I infuse that with either mango or lychee or whatever fruit is in season. So you've got a beautiful kick ass, I must say. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hash I mean, liqueur, taste. but but like a nice cream liqueur that you can have over crushed ice. Um, 
that's either mango flavored or lychee lychee cream or mango cream or what else uh we've got guava cream that i do um and but that's always just been one of my party favorites for for my stoner friends you know and oh, they no seem to love it but um that's something that I used to make and I'll have like one shot and I'd be fucking on my ass somewhere um, <laughs> and they'd be having a ball. So, but I, I remember sharing the recipe of that yonks ago on steam it. And I remember you supporting that article. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. That's a, uh, I think it might, it might have commented on that too, but yeah, it's a, uh, that's back before, uh, you know, a lot of legalization is not taking place, and uh, yeah, edible. That uh, sounds like perfect nightcap, or no doubt. That'd be a yeah, good drink. Hey, have you tried doing any uh, making a liquor with CBD oil, or mainly with the hash? No, I make it using hash. Like I make a hash with um, crushed ice that you shake and like let stand, and then extract that um um instead of using the alcohol method but um yep. yeah <laughs> that's me not knowing much but uh that's the hash that i make and then i use that hash to make the liqueur with so um it's not just like popping up a few heads and putting it into vodka or something like that it's quite an intricate oh, of process. course yeah it's yeah it's infused in it yeah yeah no doubt so your uh, how long of a growing season do your plants get? Like when uh, when you put them in the ground? Well, currently I'm putting them in the ground three months out of each other. So every three months I'll have a harvest. Oh, okay. And yeah. I've been <laughs> I've been having harvest like every three months, a good harvest I must say. Uh, nice. Most of the times more than I need. Um, but then I just give it off to like my farm, one of my farm hands, they smoke. So I give them a bunch and like yeah. some of my friends come along and I give them like, you know, I don't know, I put in a big Ziploc bag, like probably 500 grams. I'm like, Hey, Merry Christmas. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> New best friend, no doubt. <laughs> yeah. That's some perfect, perfect trees for Christmas. That's for sure. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I guess you guys pretty much have uh, you can grow all year round. I'm so used to uh, being locked in to having winter and summer and seven the one main season. You guys can pretty much plant anytime and uh, grow it up. So that's good. You yeah, do it every three yeah, months. I think I think the thing that distinguishes us from other countries is most of your soft vegetables and weed apparently um, grows yeah. better with us in in winter where it doesn't right over the world mm. you know so and especially throughout south africa um so in the province where i live um we are the major exporters of fruit and veg throughout the winter season um because of that so when it comes to okay. wheat the same thing applies i suppose um, summer months, it's a bit more effort getting water to the plants, especially seeing that we've been in a con consecutive drought for the past three years. So we need to like resource our water very, very carefully. But seeing that we're growing vegetables in the same bed, you know, if you've got two rows of carrots and you stick fucking three weed plants in between that, <laughs> and it makes your carrots grow better, uh, okay. and it takes the same amount of water, that's that's for me that's a win-win yeah that's awesome it, it it sounds yeah it does sound almost like it's uh yeah aerating a bit and somehow uh helping to reserve some water for them too or yeah it's amazing now to uh i have to do some research look up some studies on that too see uh you know what the, what the reason behind it is yeah, that's awesome yeah, and it's not only about the the insects that they attract and things like that. It's also like uh, potatoes leave a large residue of potassium in the ground, whereas tomatoes, for example, leave a lot of acidity in the ground. So potatoes uh, okay. and tomatoes would, for example, they would they would cancel they would they would re-regulate the pH of the ground that they were planted in. However, when it comes to weed. It's got such a broad array of, of 
nutritional values that it leaves behind in the earth that it supplements any other plant growing next to it and any other plant growing next to it just feeds the weed so it's it's such a um the right word that i was looking for earlier was mutualism uh yeah. mutual uh, mutual agreement between the plants basically yeah it sounds like it uh yeah it sounds like it might help uh yeah basically kind of amend the soil you know kind of help uh yeah, balance it back out so is is it uh what's the legalization state in uh south africa right now for uh like medicinal recreational how are they well, about that last year they legalized it to the extent of you're allowed to grow for personal consumption okay and um but you're not allowed to trade with it and you're not allowed to yeah. plant more than than what you need basically uh, okay which is very hard to distinguish um yeah. as far as medicinal purposes goes I haven't seen any of it being sold medicinally in in an over the counter chemist kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. So it sounds more Which like yeah, sounds, yeah. It's so sad, it sounds kind of more but... the decriminalization happened first before the uh, yes they didn't have to go yes. in through them. That's how a lot of the states seem to be uh, smoothing it in. There's you know if uh, if they don't go for recreational, then a lot of times uh, you know they're able to get the medicinal use, but. Uh, yeah, that's cool. That's cool that you're able to pretty well, you know, just grow what you need kind of thing. I guess it would be a little harder to gauge, but I'm sure they're not going around, you know, checking everyone super hard. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And um, I think even if it does come to a legalized field in the sense of being sold for medicinal uses, it's still going to have so many um uh, uh like restrictions on it which is maybe not a bad thing because you won't oh, get okay. something off the street that's infused with something that you don't necessarily want to consume in order to make you something that you don't want to be addicted to oh, um, sure. but at the same time it's that governance that just pisses me off uh, uh, no nah. there's, there's a good and a bad i suppose it's a double-edged sword right yeah yeah it seems that so often we got to pick between the you know lesser of two evils kind of thing and it's uh you know it's kind of it seems to be a better alternative to a lot of uh you know prescriptions and other kind of uh treatments they have and uh so yeah it's be good you know so even, it seems like kind of even if they have to regulate it a bit that still uh you know better alternative but of course i'm the belief you know they really shouldn't uh i, I suppose it's, it is step in the right direction nonetheless yeah well kind of like a lot of places um, out here it's, i kind of see it like well you know at least you know people aren't going to jail anymore for it kind of thing and it's it's kind of like a little bit of our freedom back kind of thing not obviously not all of it all of our liberties but uh yeah definitely it's, it's good they're not you know trying to lock people up for it but then again in general and not only when it comes to weed but i'm a grow your own kind of person you know everything yeah. i eat comes off the farm everything i i consume basically comes off the farm there is like a few commercial products that i still buy but in general like the vegetables the meat the eggs the whatever i the basics all come off the farm so yeah. when it comes yeah, always... to weed, it's great knowing that I can grow some in oh, order sure. to make my health to place myself in a better position, um, health wise, especially right now. Because um, like I said, it's my third time around this block, the big C block. Yeah. And um I've done the whole radiation thing and you know i i honestly think that's what led to me having cancer right now um so i'm not going to put myself yeah. my family everyone through that shit ever again oh, and no. if there is a natural way i'm going to take it and um if the natural way really really doesn't work doesn't matter how much effort time whatever i put into it then you know what that's god's plan then 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 yeah. i'm bound to die and that's that's it and i'd be happy accepting that fate but um as long yeah, pretty... as 
there is other alternatives available, especially like the CBD oil. Um, yeah. I'm not going to go crawl up in a corner and die, you know, if I can put it that way. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Gotta be a fighter. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's been, uh, yeah, great talking with you. We're uh, coming up to the end of the show here. But, um, yeah, it'd be great to have you back on again sometime for sure. And uh, hope to see you around here on Candy Curate a little more often than that now that you know about us. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Go. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bruce. It was great talking with you. Yeah, so this is uh, another edition of uh, Thursday Swash On with Jack Dub. We had a surprise guest on tonight, Breeze. Yeah, Breezin on Steemit dot com and you can go ahead and uh, join us here every thursday from 7 p.m to 8 p.m eastern time and there's a lot of uh great shows on the canna curate the ghro pretty much every day of the week so uh i'll go ahead and post a uh lineup of the schedule of shows for the week make sure you pop in and say hi all right folks we'll see you next time